Hello, this is Console TX, and today's Heat Signature Daily Challenge, the challenge for January 29th, January 24th, 2019, I am playing as Cetera Holgado, a vindictive ex offworld supplier with a quiet armor piercing, concussive armor piercing rifle, and a self charging long range crash beam. It's ironic that Cetera Holgado is a supplier and X Off World, because supplier is really just completely irrelevant considering the other weapons. Um, although, I mean, maybe it'll be useful if I ever need to. No, it's just never going to be useful. It's a, it's a nothing trait. Anyways, self cra self charging long range crash beam. That's a pretty good gear gadget. <clears throat> And the mission is to bring in three foundry officers while harming as few other people as, officer, uh, uh, as possible. So, to no harm daily, which means that actually this is not useful. Uh, this rifle. And this is actually a deeply concerning daily challenge. Well,. Foundry ships are the best for no harm dailies in general because they have cramped spaces, but they are there's like a lot of obstacles in the way, so there's a lot of ways to avoid people. The alarm response ooh, there's no alarm response, so that's interesting. That means I can lure people around with noise, and these heat sen uh, sensors are less of a concern for me. The bosses have emergency shields, so I'll be able to just reach my target and then grab them. Uh, defenders, actually an anti-concern probably, because they are going to protect people from shooting each other. So that's good. Jammer gates, completely irrelevant. Uh, and then it's a no-harm daily, so I want to not harm anybody. So, the ship is going up, and it's a foundry ship. So I want to be below. And then slightly to the So, right here I see level 1 clearance guy, and I need that keycard, so I don't want to harm anybody, So I, and that means that I'm just going to lure them over to me, and we'll go from there. So I need to let him get close, yoink his keycard, and then, oops, and run around the corner. The defender is actually really great. Alright, I'm just going to go up this way. I was going to go all the way around, but there's no need to bother with that. The defender is really great, because the defender actually has a non-trivial, like, these guys are all cramped up and I'd be really worried about them killing each other uh, under normal circumstances, but thanks to the defender, they are all just immune to bullets. So the defender is the, really, the only real concern, because none of these guys have shotguns, and so... Okay, so I need to get this level 2 key card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire this gun to piss everybody off. And then I'm going to run down and around. Okay, so those guys should turn to the right. And then I can run up. So defender, the defender has a shotgun, and I can't dodge shotgun blasts uh, easily. Everybody else I can easily dodge the bullets of, so the defender is the only dangerous person. Whoops, I just threw my crash beam for no reason. Uh, I might as well just crash this sentry. So running through here is a bit of a concern because I don't have a good way to get past guard gardener. Hmm. So what I could do... Hmm. So, if I walk into the heat sensor, Guard Gardener is going to turn and see me. Uh, I could do the very risky thing and just try and run past him, time it so that he shoots a shot, I dodge it, and then I run through him, and I'll be far enough away to dodge the next shot before he can fire it off. <laughs> That's really risky, um, and I'd rather not do that. 
What other recourse do I have, though? Well, one thing that I could do that'll take a long time is I can go into this doorway, shoot the gun, and then lure the guards all the way away. Uh, and then do another loop in here. But that brings me back past the defender again. And so that also worries me. Gosh, I wish I had a melee weapon so that I could lunge at Guard Gardener and get through. Um, what other things could I do? I'd like to... I'd like to blast out one of these windows, just in case. This is actually quite tricky. So say I run down and just throw my concussive gun in there. Well, no, if I ran down, then I'd be able to... If I got far enough to throw the concussive down, gun down, then I would have been, I would be far enough to not get shot. God, I really don't want to run back through the other way, because not only is it risky, but also it takes a long time. So it's like, this is risky, but it's quick. And this is risky because of the defender, because it's like, what do I do? So I would go here, I would shoot, and then I'd have to run past the defender to get down there. I don't like that one bit. So that's risky. And even if it succeeds, it takes a long time. Whereas this is risky, but it's very fast. Hmm. Is there a better way for me to do this? If I could lure the guards up into like a corner of a room. Oh, you know what I can do? I can throw my gun like I was thinking, but hopefully it'll fire a shot and then they'll get pulled over to where it fired the shot so I'm gonna try and do that yeah so they should run over to the gun now and then I can run past I'll take my gun back as well all right so then I can run past I need to yoink level three as I run past Okay, so they're going to shoot bullets at me. That's fine. I want to wait for them to shoot. And then I want to run in and grab the level 3. Alright, now I want to run away. And then I can dodge any bullets as needed. Perfect. Okay, so I'm running all the way through. And as I run all the way through, I also want to shoot out this window. Not because I want to go into space right now, but because I want the window to be open. Hopefully I don't get sucked out. Okay, good. I want the window to be open in case things go horribly wrong around here. So I still need to not harm anybody. But I want to loot these crates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lure all of these guys over oh my goodness i've had a crash beam this whole time all of these heat sensors that i've been worried about i could just crash the heat sensors i was like oh the crash beam is only for harming people and i don't want to harm people so i don't want to fuck around with the crash beam in retrospect obviously i should have crashed the one guy's heat sensor and then just joined his key card run past he was defended so the other guy wouldn't have even been able to shoot him i could run past him the other guy would see me but he wouldn't have seen me so that would have been faster that's a that's a pretty silly oversight, um, but it's totally fine. So I want to blast the capture target. Okay. Is that didn't lure the guy over to where the gunshot was? That I'm confused, but okay. So I want to crash him. Ooh, a visitor. That's exciting. Hmm. Okay, well, so I want to—I want these guys to get out of the way of the of the body. So, and I also want to loot this keycard. Okay, so now the worry is that they shoot each other. I need to make sure that that doesn't happen. I need to get out of here. Okay, so it looks like we'll be able to get away scot-free. Yes. Okay. Got away with it. Alright. So as long as they don't come back over here, we are in great.
great shape. Ooh, it looks like they are coming. Oh, slipstream. Alright. Problem solved. Whoops. Let's just activate this again. Pick up carbon. Uh, whatever. Oh, almost in the radius. In retrospect, I should have move my off-world angel just a little bit closer so that I could activate it right away and pick us, uh, pick me and carbon justice up right away. But yeah, so that worked out. Um, I think that was, that was a pretty good performance. The, the key idea that I totally was missing was crashing heat sensors so that they wouldn't notice me. Uh, I was worrying and worrying about that one obstacle and grabbing that key card when I could have just crashed those guys' heat sensors and snuck by way more easily. Uh, so that was a that was a bit of an oversight. Although I don't think I wasted an enormous amount of time with the solution that I did come up with, throwing the gun. I think that was a good solution. And I only ended up going I go I went down one room, over, and then up. And so that's one room down, one room up of backtracking, plus however much time I wasted waiting for people to do things. So that's a little bit of wasted time, but it's not a, like, it's not an egregiously bad waste of time. It really worked out pretty well. Uh, and then in the second bit, did I, I was waiting for people to run over. There might have been a way to do that. Certainly without looting the crates, uh, that, that could have been done faster, but looting the crates is absolutely worth it because I got a slipstream from it. Um, luring them over, there might have been a way for me to, especially with crashing the heat sensors, to be further up and yoink the key cards without having to do all of the backtracking. So like here was the pilot, let's say, and there was a lot of sort of running around up here. And if I had yoinked the key card as they're running from the like window room and knocked the guy out from there, then they could have run over here and then I could have taken the body and I would have avoided some wasted time. So like I could have shaved off a fair bit of time by just remembering to crash to, or for thinking of the crashing heat sensor tactic and then maybe making some slightly better strategic plays. But I didn't, I didn't incur any penalties. Very happy about that. Uh, since in no harm dailies, I traditionally mess something up and incur a penalty or get myself shot with a sentry gun even though I'm moving at sonic speeds. <clears throat> uh, uh. But yeah, that one went really well. So I don't even think it was that slow. Like 58 seems like a long time, but on a no harm daily like this without like a gadget like a slipstream, it's actually pretty good, I think. And now I do have a slipstream, so these next ones are gonna be pretty easy. So like that was the key mission, I think. That's that's the that's the make or break mission when it comes to to who gets who's gonna get the highest score, I think. And I think I handled that mission pretty well. So I feel pretty good. There are definitely ways for people to handle that mission better, but I think the way that I did handle it was quite good. So looking at this next mission, the alarm response is target fleas, which is cool, but all of the guards are very vulnerable, which is less cool. Uh, normally you'd be happy that you could knock all of the guards out really easily, but what that means is that I need to pay attention so that they don't kill each other. I'm going to be running through with a slipstream, and I always, always forget to not, to like, usually a slipstream, I, when, when, I, when I, I see a slipstream, I just turn off my brain. I'm like, well, I'm just going to run through the whole ship, and that's going to be that. And I need, need, need to keep in mind that the, the guys seeing me, that's fine technically, but if they're lined up and one of them takes a shot, somebody's going to die. And that, I, I need to make sure that I don't let the guards kill themselves um, or kill each other. So that's the key thing to keep in mind. Uh, this visitor could be interesting. We'll see. I mean, I, I, it's probably not going to be that interesting. I'm probably just going to run through the whole ship with the slipstream. You link all the key cards, do all the things. Uh, maybe if there's like a crate that's super out of the way, the visitor would be useful. Who knows? Um, but yeah. And then I probably am going to want to set off the alarm right away and then intercept the target on their way to the telepad. Uh, I think that I'm not worried about any crates. Thanks to my slipstream, I can sort of do anything. Um, I have a crash beam. 
I, I have the armor piercing rifle, so it's like I can deal with, uh, with anything that the target has, with any defenses that the target has very easily. So I have all of the gear I need. Um, and it's like, it would be good to have a swapper and a sidewinder just because those make you go faster, but it's not necessary by any stretch of the imagination. So level one is kind of annoyingly far out of the way. Let's see, where, how far, this crate is extremely far out of the way, so I'm not going to go after it. I am going to fire this gun to try and get level one. I could shoot the guy who has level one. Wait, where's the telepad? So how would the target go to the telepad? What's the fastest route? Is it this way? So let's say this is one room of backtracking, then it's a straight shot versus a lot. Yeah, so the target's definitely going to run in this direction uh, in response to the alarm sounding. So if I yoink level one, if I shoot my gun and yoink level one, then I can go up and around this way and grab the target as they come this way. I can also visit and take this. That's actually not... Because I really just don't care about this crate. I just want the target to be close to the window so that we can both exit the ship ASAP. So, yoinking the key card, what's the most backtracking that I'm going to have to do? I need to get to the target. I need to get to the window. So, I could go up... And through this way, I'd have to get the key card from over there. So it'd be like that. Um, so it'd be like it'd be one, two rooms of backtracking, or one, two rooms of backtracking, plus going up this way. Or I would go around this way, which is one more than going up. And then it's some. It's the same amount of backtracking going this way. So going up, I think, is better assuming that I am going to intercept the target right where they are, run through, jump out the window, and that'll be that. What other gear do I have? I have the visitor. This ship is not glitch-proof. It's the next ship that's glitch-proof, so that's unfortunate. Uh, I would like to use the visitor, but I think it's just going to be too slow. So yeah, so I want to run over... Sound the alarm. Wait, oh, right. I don't want to sound the alarm, actually. Well, I probably will naturally sound the alarm, but the target's going to end up, like, right here. And that'll be fine. I think it's got to be faster, right? So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14 rooms to get to the target versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 rooms to get to the target. This one was 14, even without counting this key card that I had to get. So it's got to be faster. It's it's clear, it's self-evidently faster. Or not self-evident. But the point is, I just counted it out, and it's faster to go up. So that's what I'm going to do. As long as these guys don't kill each other. So I want to go this way, because they're... If I go up, they'll be lined up, and that, do that doesn't bode well for their physical health. So they all took shots. Oh, I just lost my momentum. Okay. So, they're a bit distracted. Target's going to the telepad. Don't see me. Oh, who shot? Who shot? Okay, it's the top person. Nobody's gonna die. Okay. Alright. And then I need the clearance from up here. Where's the target? Target's running. Okay, I need clearance from up here. I'm gonna run down. Yoink. Okay, and then this guy. I lost my momentum again? Why do I keep losing my momentum? Oh, that's a shotgun. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, shoot. He's going to shoot out the window, isn't he? Alright. Let's get out of there. Alright, we need to get right past this guy because he has a shotgun and he is going to harm other people if he is allowed to, to do that. Alright. 
well, in retrospect, going down would have been the safer choice. Because now I don't have a... Well, no, I do have a way through this room. They're all facing the wrong direction now, so it should be... Should be fine. Let me just make sure... This guy just has a gun, 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 shotgun. Okay, okay. Alright. So, I want to run all the way down. Because I am hoping that guard Capizzi doesn't see me. That, that would be the ideal situation. Okay. Alright. Then I want to run this direction. I want to crash the sentry. And I want to blast Babu Signori. run to over here. Nope, not that direction, though. They almost got me. They almost fooled me. I'll stash them. I'm gonna run to, let's say, over here. And then I want to pick up Babu Signori while I'm at it. Oh, okay, I need to fire off a slipstream. Oh, no! Uh... Guard Alfeca has just fired a concussive blast at Guard Arctan. Hmm. I think the only way I can deal with that is by getting hit by that blast myself. I don't have a way to move Guard Arctan out of the way. Yeah, that's gonna hit. I need this grenade too. Okay. See, that's what I was talking about with not paying enough attention to whether guards are gonna shoot each other or not. Fortunately, I didn't get I didn't get penalized for it, but I did waste a lot of time by intercepting that shot so that's unfortunate plus now i'm running on fume on slipstream fumes i've only got this one use left to get all the way through which i mean is eminently doable but it's somewhat concerning Oh yeah, especially because I'm not going to have the slipstream use active while I'm holding Bobby Signori. Really? Can I not pick up the the guard from here? Okay, now I can. Oops. Well, so much for that momentum. It's fine though. You guard Alfeca, you villain. Gosh, guard Alfeca is just ruining everything for me. Now I wanted to exit out this window, but now there's going to be a person in there. They're going to walk into the room as I blast the window, blast us all out into space. Gosh. Do I really not have a way to lure? I do. I do have a way to lure Guard Alfeca over. Okay, so I'll throw Babu Signori over here. And then I'll visit up to here. visit up to here, shoot my gun, that'll lure Guard Alfeca over, and then I'll get yoinked back by the visitor. So that's two seconds, which is much better than the alternative, which is like running around, playing Ring Around the Rosies, trying to find a window. So I wasted two seconds because I have to wait for the visitor to go. But uh-oh, uh-oh, these guys are going to shoot each other, aren't they? Hmm. Do I have a way to prevent that? I need to get yoinked out of the way, ASAP. Can I get around the corner before they shoot each other? Oh, thank God. Okay. Alright, so I'm gonna get pulled back. And then I can pick up Babu Signori. Leave. Alright. So, yeah. 
So that was... So I think I handled that crisis well, but that was definitely a... Uh, it's definitely an oversight. It's like... And I, was, and I was talking about it beforehand. It's like, I need to make sure that they don't shoot each other. And lo and behold, Guard Alfeca fires a shot at one of, the, uh, one of his allies... And it's gonna hit him and knock him out. So that's really annoying. Um, is there a way I could have avoided that situation? Well, yes, obviously I could have positioned the guards in better spots. Uh, another thing that was a problem was that I used a lot of slipstream uses because I just incidentally lost my momentum doing a lot of things. Like I should have had, I should have had four slipstream uses left when guard Alfeco was about to shoot. Uh, that other guard and I had two I used the one to intercept the bullet or the concussive shot and then I only had one left to do the rest of the thing and you have to lose your momentum in order to pick up the rescue target and run them to an area and so you want to have a slipstream charge left when you're picking up the target and I didn't at the end there which almost resulted in the disaster but thankfully I was able, able to resolve that, only wasting two seconds by using the visitor and luring the luring my nemesis guard Alfeca with uh, with the concussive blast. Although I almost got some people killed in the upper right part where all of the guards had flooded in to come look at what the commotion was. So yeah, there were a lot of problems there, but I think I handled them quite well. Really, I just shouldn't have created those problems in the first place, though. Uh, I should have been, I guess, more careful with all of my slipstream uses, um, and then I also should have been more cognizant of guard sight lines, which is something that I always forget about in the No Harm Dailies, even though it's like, I need to think about this, I need to think about this, I almost forgot. I think it was, uh, I think having gotten into that situation, my decision to take the concussive blast on the chin was a really good decision, though. I'm really proud of that. Um, but, oh, you know what would have been better, though, is visiting into the concussive blast and then, like, running with the slipstream to somewhere else and then visiting into the concussive blast to take it on the chin. Because then I'd get yoinked away from the concussive blast and hopefully wake up in time to... Uh, to not get picked up by one of the guards. But I didn't think of that. That definitely would have been that would have been a way to do it. Like it might have it might have just resulted in no benefit, but it also could have saved like tens of seconds in time wasted picking myself up in space and getting the guards walking me all the way to the airlock and that sort of thing. Um and then another thing to keep in mind is that and I don't actually think it would have been super useful, but it, it's something that uh, that would have been good to do in retrospect is if I had blasted up, if I had blasted out the window in the top right of the ship when I picked the key card up from there, then that would have been another point of entry and also a point of egress in an emergency because if the window's already broken, then when you run out of it, when, then you, when you leave the ship through it, it won't suck other guards into space. Um, so that, that's another thing that I could have kept in mind. And the last thing, and so that's that's those are the major and minor things that I think went wrong or could have been improved on on that second ship. Um, yeah, just in general, I, I was a little bit careless, which is characteristic of me when I when I have a slipstream in my hands. Uh, but the last last thing that I could have done is Guard Alfeco was walking down to the bottom right. Uh, and I visited and then shot a shotgun blast, or, or concussive blast. But the other thing I could have done was I could have just gone down there with Guard Alfeca. And then we would all three of us get sucked out into space. And what I could have done was I could have picked myself in the target, the, the capture target up, not picked Guard Alfeca up, and then turned in the mission before Guard Alfeca died in space. And if the mission gets turned in before Guard, Alf Guard Alfeca dies in space, then uh, it doesn't count as Guard Alfeca being harmed. So 
that would be the the highest highest risk play that would be worth considering but that would have been that would have been pushing it uh so yeah so again i think i wasted a fair bit of time uh getting shot although it was intentional putting myself in the situation where i where I, that was the only option and not uh, not thinking of the clever idea of visiting there so that I would get yoinked to somewhere, hopefully out of sight, and then wake up on my own. Um, that could have saved me a lot of time if I had thought of that. Uh, but yeah, just not getting into that situation in the first place would be ideal. So, that definitely could have been a faster ship. But, it's all good. Still no penalties, and that's what's important. That's what's important is that there are still no penalties. Like, I've, I've been in a lot of situations in these two missions, and by a lot, I mean, like, several situations where I was very close to getting a penalty, and I didn't. So I'm feeling really good. And in this last mission, it's going to be easy, because I have a slipstream, you know? And it's like, this second mission wasn't easy for some reason, even though I had a slipstream. This last mission, though, it's going to be easy, because I have a slipstream. So let's look at it. Uh, we've got armored guards, which is great. I like when guards are armored, because it means they can't kill each other. And then I have bosses that are hopefully armored or shielded. Uh, my target could have anything going, because I have a crash beam, and I have an armor-piercing rifle. Um, these guards all have heat sensors, so I want to keep in mind that I can crash the heat sensor, which is something I always am not thinking about, but that's actually very useful. Alarm response is target flees, potentially useful. And... The hull is glitch-proof, which is very, very good to know, because that means that I can visit to my target, knock them out, and run us both out into space. And the visitor won't pull me back into the ship, which is great. That's that's exciting. It's incredible. I'm very happy about that. So, yeah. Uh, no contractors or anything. All right, let's get, let's get to it. So where's the ship? Which direction is it going? I actually can't tell for some reason. It's going up slightly and to the left slightly, so I want to be below it and to the right. Is there a locked? The, so the locked airlock is not even in a good spot. Um, I could subvert it to get through. That's another thing to keep in mind. I have this subverter used that I can use to subvert a door. So let's start by immediately activating the slipstream. So I'm just going to sound the alarm. The target's going to run to the telepad this direction. So I can intercept the target at this window. I don't want these guys to follow me to the window. So I think I can lure them up. If my timing is really good, I can shoot my gun here to lure them up and then visit down below them to just outright bypass them. Uh, and then grab my target and exit before the visitor wears out. Uh, I doubt that the timing is going to line up because I think I'm going to beat my target there by a pretty significant margin due to the slipstream. Um, I could just wait in this room to do that, maybe. The other thing I could do is just crash all of these guys and then run by because that way they'll be less inclined to follow just because I'll be out of the, the like, follow me radius sooner, probably. Um, I can run up and around, too, and that'll hopefully preempt. That, that'll, I just don't want them to be in this winter room when I blast it up. Um, the last thing I could do is I could run down to the telepad and subvert it. And then wait for the target to get launched out into space. But the concern there is... Well, that's just going to be slower than me capturing the target myself because it's going to take like 16 seconds for them to get here and I could capture them in less time than that. Now if I got out of the radius of the ship and then went and grabbed the target, no, I just I don't think that's going to be faster. I think that'll be slower. So I'm not going to mess around with that. Um, if only it was an assassin, uh, assassination mission then that would totally be the way to go. So I need level 2 to get through here, 
Level 2 is pretty out of the way. Um, let's see. If I get there even faster... Oh, the target doesn't even have armor. Yeah. If I get there even faster, then I can use this window. So, I... And, and in terms of key cards, level 3 and level 4 are very forthcoming. So I'm just going to subvert this level 2 door here. I think that's the way to do it. So I'm going to autopath over to that. And then I'm going to subvert the door. And then I'll just grab level 3 clearance on my way over to the target. And then level 4. Yeah, so the target is going to be very close by the time I get over there. So I'm in pretty good shape. Nice thing is that I don't need to worry about these guys killing each other either, because they're all armored and none of them have armor piercing weaponry of any sort. Um, I'm just gonna crash this sentry. Oh, I crashed the door. Okay, no, that's actually totally fine, because I have a visitor. So, visit, slipstream. Blast the target. I want to wait just a, just a time. Oh, wait, I have a concussion hammer. Let's use that. Pick up the target. Run down and run out. Remote control the off-world angel. Ah, just a little bit out of range. I should have had the foresight to move the off-world angel up so that I could yoink my guards, or myself and my target in right away. That was fine. So yeah, that was great. And 15 seconds is definitely better than I would have gotten if I had just subverted the telepad and left because I was already at six seconds upon docking with the ship would have been like half a second to go subvert the telepath and then 17 seconds of the target walking through the ship uh, so that's yeah that's more time than I spent so it was a really good last mission really really straightforward no nonsense nothing bad happened but yeah so my first mission was a little bit slow a little bit of wasted time uh, from not remembering that I could crash heat sensors but the first mission wasn't that much worse than, than I think the best first mission uh, would be. Like, I think the best for, first mission would maybe be like 40 seconds and I spent a minute. And 40 seconds would be like really good. Like, I think that 50 seconds would be uh, a normal time uh, for somebody who's going super fast. Second mission, though, I really messed up. Uh, I think I really salvaged it well, but it got pretty bad. And that's where I think I would have lost the most time. Because that was a mission that could have been completed almost as quickly as this one was completed uh, by somebody more careful than I was. So, that's the real problem. Maybe on the second mission I should have been more willing to use the visitor to do things. Because there were a lot of key cards that were like out of the way or just hard to get without like pissing people off. And maybe I should have just bitten the bullet, use the visitor, even though it's even though it's going to pull you back and there's nothing you can do about it, and using it toasts your momentum, your slipstream momentum, because I, I get all wrapped up in trying to use a slipstream to do everything, because I'm like, oh, well, if I do something else, then I'll lose the momentum from the slipstream, and that's a waste, but I think that actually, maybe that sort of strategy would have been more effective on the second ship. But yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of room for somebody to do better than me on the second ship, and a little bit of room for somebody to do better than me on the first ship. And then the third ship, I think, went pretty much as well as it could. I mean, the third ship was, was an easy one, because I didn't have to worry about the guards hurting each other. I got to slam my subverter use, which is also another thing I could have used on the second ship to, like, bypass a locked door somewhere. Like, maybe the very first locked door, rather than running all the way down to those guys. Yeah. Also, I think I might have miscounted the, like, pa how long the path was to get through the upper part of the ship, because it felt like it was going really slow, and that going through the lower part of the ship would have been faster. I don't remember exactly what was going on there. But yeah, what's the score? Number one for now, but again, I did this earlier than a lot of other people, so Taryn could get ahead of me, uh, Reneko could get ahead of me, and so on. Um, let's see, what names do I recognize? There's Seamus Donahue, Mr. JM. Uh, oh, there are a lot of names here that I don't recognize. I don't recognize 
any of these people, actually. I think I've seen any of them. Um, and this is also, like, people have gotten a lot of penalties here, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah, it looks like I'm the only person without a penalty at this juncture. But, yeah, I think this is definitely doable. The first ship, especially if you remember that you can crash heat sensors, which I just forgot because I'm like, oh, heat sensors, it's just like a normal guard. Uh, and then when I'm thinking about, like, the, st the strategy before I get on the ship, I'm like, oh, heat sensors is just a normal guard. You should ignore the heat sensor. And then it's a no-harm daily, and I'm like, oh, this heat, sec this heat sensor is a big problem. It's like, how am I going to yoink these key cards? And I, I, and I just haven't made the mental connection of, oh, yeah, the crash beam can deal with that. And that's actually a very useful ability of the crash beam because I just don't think about crashing heat sensors. I'm like, oh, you don't need to do that. And then they get in the way, and they're like, well, you can't crash them, because that's not what crash beams are for. So yeah, that's an oversight. Uh, so I think the first mission, the first mission, which is traditionally the hardest mission on No Harm Dailies, um, is very doable if you crash heat sensor guards, I think. Like, I think I was a little bit tricky, and I was able to do it, but somebody who who puts lef less effort uh, or has less skill at being tricky, could also do it by just being better at remembering things than I was, and just crashing heat sensors. Or if they're as tricky, they can crash the heat sensors and then just get a better time than me. So yeah, uh, second ship, uh, second ship, absolute fiasco catastrophe that I salvaged pretty well. Didn't get a penalty, so that's good. But there's plenty of there's plenty of room for Terran to improve on my score. So, yeah. Once again, we're hoping for uh, an electromagnetic pulse to wipe out the power grid around Terran's uh, locale so that I maintain my number one spot. Speaking of, what did I get on yesterday's daily? What leaderboard position? Ah, uh, number two. Yeah. Pumpkin. That is a name that I don't think I have ever seen before. Who is Pumpkin? I'll have to keep that in mind. Is, has Pumpkin done this daily yet? Pumpkin, Pumpkin. Well, if Pumpkin has done the daily, then they didn't get a very good score. But Pumpkin, wow. I don't think I've ever seen Pumpkin on the top of the leaderboard. That's so interesting. Um, I don't see Terran or Reneko on yesterday's leaderboard. They might just not be playing it. I think Reneko hasn't been playing them. Uh... And then I haven't seen Terran around on the leaderboard, so it's a good possibility that Terran's also not playing them because it's uncharacteristic of Terran to not get really good scores. So unless he, like, changed his name or something, yeah, he just hasn't been playing the dailies. So, I mean, that's good for me and my number one scores, uh, but it's less good for... Okay, here's Terran, so four days ago, three days ago. Pumpkin, number six here. Yeah, wow, Pumpkin. I've just never noticed Pumpkin before. Good job, Pumpkin. On yesterday's daily. What was the time? 12 seconds faster than me. Okay, yeah. Cool. More competition. Alright, yeah, so I think my number one score could, could hold on today's daily. No harm dailies are very thick with beasts, so even somebody who... Um, who plays better than me, might just get smoked by getting a little penalty. Um, it looks like there's no times here. Mr. JM with a close one. Uh, there are no times here that are faster than mine, but, like, it's that there's definitely a good chance that, uh, that somebody who would be at a faster pace than me might just get smoked by something bad happening. Like, like, I wasted a lot of time by intercepting that concussive blast, but somebody else might just have a, a half-second lapse and hold the slow-mo button, and then that guy will get knocked out, and they'll get a five-point uh, five penalty. And it's like, sometimes you're just in the middle of something, and you, you just miss those tiny details, and then you get smoked out of 93 points of speed bonus uh, as a result of it. And so that could easily happen to somebody who would otherwise beat me. So, yeah, so I'm feeling even better about this number one score than I was about yesterday's number one score. 
Um, and yesterday, I ended up number two. I thought I was going to end up at, like, number seven because uh, I thought several people had the potential to beat me. But, I mean, it looks like Edible Clown and NTLC2 had the capacity to get a better score than me. Like, they were only off by 20 to 30 seconds or whatever. Well, Edible Clown was off by three seconds. TLC2, NTLC2 was off by 27 seconds, or 26 seconds. But, like, Mr. JM was way behind me, so he probably wasn't going to get a better score. But, yeah, Pumpkin with a better score, and then Edible Clown and TLC2 pretty close. Uh, I thought there would be more people ahead of me, but... Yeah, that's pretty sweet. And then today, number one so far. I'll have to check tomorrow if that stood, or if that stands. Yeah. Today's daily was pretty fun. Pretty fun. Actually, a lot of cool stuff happened. A lot of a lot of bad things happened, and then cool things happened in response to the bad things. So that's how Heat Signature is supposed to be. It's like the idea of intercepting a concussive blast with my body in order to not incur a penalty is something that would only happen in a daily challenge. And so that's the really fun thing about these daily challenges, I think. So yeah, I feel really good. This is a great daily. Uh, yeah, super fun. All right, this is Consul TX signing off. Thanks for watching.